Hey everybody, this is Doug. I've had something on my heart. Um, I, I um, want to talk to you about. Um, I've been, let's see, we've been in the ministry houses here since the summer of, I think it was June of 2007. Um, before that, um, I was out and around the country, 2005, 2006. No, it must have been the summer of 2006. Um, no, 2000. Okay, no, the business, we walked away from the business summer of 2006. So it was 2006, 2007 in the spring. I was around the country, and then in the summer we got the first townhouse. Okay, so we're going on nine years now in the townhouses. Now before that, we had a food pantry, and we were giving away furniture and all kinds of stuff at my furniture store for a couple of years. And this whole thing dates back to the vision Lord gave me November 23rd, 2004. Now, in about 2000, I think it was the beginning of 2008, there was this big uh, brouhaha um over Chris Evans and this girl that he was kind of wanting to marry date something I don't know what and Steve Wilson was here for two weekends in 2008 I believe and had helped make a couple of videos and was on board with the whole thing and then then this thing with Chris got all squirrely and this little Korean young lady that he was kind of chasing um, Steve Wilson's wife is a little Korean lady too and they got along and then uh, rallied the troops and they called Chris all kinds of names and convinced her to leave and never come back and all this stuff and then Claire flipped out tried to take over the ministry stole money out of the safe and uh, everything got all weird then Claire wrote letters all over the internet and then Steve renounced FOTM and did a bunch of videos and spoke a bunch of lies about child support, about how many times I've been married, about a whole bunch of stuff. Made a video about how the FOTM logo, which is simply a crown of thorns, stylized for the bride, was a torture device, which of course a crown of thorns is. We are a religion that 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 uses iconography of torture devices all the time. I mean, people wear little gold crosses around. You know, a torture device, so horrible, they had to invent words like excruciating to, to describe the pain of the cross. There's lots of, you know, Voice of the Martyrs and lots of other ministries that have a crown of thorns as, as a part of their logo. The whole point of the ring was, yes, the bride gets her jewelry. She gets, she is the body of Christ. She has her flavor, has to go through the same stuff he does. And when you become a Christian and you put on that, that engagement ring, because we are betrothed, we're waiting for him to come and get us and take us to the marriage feast. The longer you wear it, the more consequences there's going to be when you take it off. The, the, if you're Moses, all you got to do is tap the stone and you don't get to go in the promised land. You know, if, if you're a baby Christian that went down the aisle because your girlfriend did and you wanted to just her to like you, and then next week you decide you don't want anything to do with it, no big deal. You can pull that, pull that right off and it probably hasn't got ingrown and whatever. But the more you know, the closer you are to God, the more the consequences when you decide to walk away from the gospel. Uh, the, the more he's going to turn you over to something. That's just the reality of it. And so the point was salvation is easy and holiness is hard. 
and to wear that ring and to be betrothed to him and to be faithful to him and to be true to him and no other is hard. And Steve twisted it into some kind of weird occultic thing and I got to thinking the Bible is clear about a seven year Sabbath, about a year of Jubilee. That every seven years, all the debts are wiped clean. That nothing is permanent. Even if somebody sold into slavery because of their debts, in seven years, you have to free them. And nobody is a permanent slave. So people that talk about how the Bible's all, you know, it's not, it's not slavery like we talk about in the South, it's it's not at all. They're to be treated well, and they're to be released uh, in seven years. And you pay for them, prorated, based on when the next Jubilee is, because you know you're only going to get them for three or four years. It's also a time to wipe clean debts that, that haven't been paid, to free people from debtor's prison, to um, start over. Uh, we talk about America being uh, Judeo-Christian foundations, and it is. A lot of the laws, like, um, you know, after seven years, a bankruptcy falls off your record. That's because the Bible says seven years is the time to release people. You know, there's a lot of stuff still left in our law that, that, is, that is from biblical foundations. It seems to me we, we, we keep things all together way too long. As, as Christians, we are quick to shoot our wounded or each other that aren't wounded or whoever or shoot our best soldiers because they're trying to raise the bar. And then we just keep shooting at them endlessly. There's stuff posted on various websites uh, on the internet that Claire posted that are flat up lies I've asked them to take it down I've asked them to reconsider I've tried to reason with them I've tried to whatever nothing you know there ought to be a jubilee there ought to be a, a place where it just drops off your record because that, the danger of the internet is it, it's just going to be there forever and no, and no matter what was, you know, I, I did a video a couple days ago about this young man that wants to come. And his mom's decided we're a cult. And so she gets online and starts pulling up this stuff that's seven, eight, nine years old. Stuff that's long settled, long done, but, but there's not necessarily a, a resolution on the internet. You know, we were on Dr. Phil. And it looked like, oh, this horrible, whatever. Okay, well, she got custody. Okay. She she fixed it so he didn't go to jail. She didn't want him to do prison time. He should have and would have. You know, they're all living in Houston. They're not even part of the ministry. The guy sees his kids regularly every week. It's all twisted up. You know, Greg uh, Weiler was accused of trying to bomb churches. He was found not responsible. He was He was drunk and high. And the doctors found that he wasn't in his right mind. And still, he's been a year and a half waiting to get into a halfway house to release him from the federal mental ward and get him back into society. It never tied to us. It never had anything to do with us. No court, no anybody ever connected it to us, asked us to testify, charged us with anything. You better believe if they thought it was a conspiracy that it come after us with guns blazing. There was never an inquiry, never a question. I never met anybody, talked to anybody except press about it. And it still haunts us. It still goes around and around and around. And I don't mind. I'll take I'll take shots for Greg. He's a he's a sweet kid that fell through the cracks and everybody let him down and somebody needs to love him. Now he thinks he's a satanist and disagrees with me on everything but he loves me and calls me dad because he knows I love him and I'd do whatever for him anyway 
a whole bunch of the stuff that Hetgal, Steve Wilson, I don't think he's using Hetgal anymore, but whatever, Steve Wilson loaded, was mostly against Chris Evans, who has been, I don't know where, bumping around in the dark, doing I don't know what, since we put him out of here in 2008. And yet there's still all this stuff that he's a co-director of the ministry, that he's whatever. No, he was off track. He went on this crazy mission trip for this girl that had nothing to do with us, that we got blamed for. You know, there ought to be a statute of limitations on this, on this kind of stuff. There ought to be a time when Christians, even if they have a beef, stop and say, you know what, let's lay that down now. The Lord should have handled it by now. The Lord should have intervened by now. If Doug is so wrong, why hasn't God crushed him by now? Why is the ministry growing? Why are people still coming? Why is God still providing? You know, just this week, miraculously, bills got paid. God moved on people's hearts. God provided. God made a way. Electricity didn't get cut off. God, you know, rent got paid. You know, now we got to do it again next week. <laughs> But he continues. I, I know what it's like for God to be mad at you and want to crush you. And this is not it. And this hasn't been it for years. Uh, there was one time I disobeyed on a little thing. It wasn't even humongous. But I listened to somebody else instead of listening to God. Like that, a hurricane hit the server's. In Florida, <laughs> took out all of our websites. Everything was down, email, websites, everything. For a week, the server company tried to get them online and another hurricane hit Florida. They drove them, servers physically, with all the hard drives to North Carolina to get us back online again and all the other people on their server. And a hurricane hit North Carolina and knocked the servers out. <laughs> and until the Lord let up, you know, we were a good week, 10 days the ministry completely dead in the water and it was clear it was him and he wasn't letting up till I was real good and sorry and learned my lesson anyway why don't we have a year of jubilee why don't we why don't we release the captives why don't we stop the wagging tongues every seven years at least I mean if we can't if we can't settle stuff sooner why can't we at least wipe the slate clean and start over? We're coming up on Yom Kippur. I believe Steve is sinning. I believe that he's lied. I believe that he's continued to lie and slander that has caused harm. That there's little sheep that have been hurt by him. And I'd like it to stop before we go another seven years. I think... Uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, they talk about it being the, the, the closing of the books for the year, that whatever's not settled, it's written in stone, and I don't think the blood of Jesus works that way. But I think it's, I think it's a, a good thing to have one day of the year, like New Year's, where we kind of make resolutions and settle everything and kind of focus on, you know, like one day of the year to be thankful. And, uh, um, whatever, and I, I think it's good to uh, maybe rush around a little bit and square things with everybody before the Day of Atonement coming up uh, second week of October and uh, Steve if you if you get this and you're listening to me I I've been serving God with all my heart whatever beef you had is so long dead you and me both got long gray beards I don't understand what proof would be required what what evidence what fruit we fed thousands of people we've housed hundreds and hundreds of people you think you're more right than me then let's sit down and talk about it one time you said, oh, Doug's 98% right, but it's the 2% that'll get you. Well, dude, they ain't no one percenters. They ain't no 100 percenters. Everybody's got something wrong. That's all God has ever had. Every revival in history, he used people that were flawed, broken vessels of some sort. 
I mean, if I'm, I'm grateful you think I'm 2% wrong. I think you're 30, 40% wrong. But, uh, you know, th there ought to be a stop to this. You know, my friend Baron, um, has a, has a friend, was a Christian comedian back in the eighties. And, um, oh, he went through a divorce and she said all this stuff that he really wasn't who he said he was and that he, this and that and whatever. And it drove him out of the ministry pretty well for 20 years. And it's still really, really difficult. People won't let that stuff go. People won't believe that, that you're a different person or that you repented or that you learned your lesson or that you're wiser now or anything. Um, it's really sad. It's not Jesus. It's not forgiveness. It's not mercy. It's not redemption. Anyway, I, I think there is the spirit to the law. Uh, Jesus, I mean, the, the father got all over him because he would command them to release the slaves. They'd go into captivity, be punished for not obeying, and then here they come back, they're doing it again. And they say, oh yeah, we'll release them. And then they don't. You know, he's pretty serious about this. He, he, the whole spirit of the law is about redemption, is about, about forgiveness, about giving people another chance. Anyway. I, uh, I'd like you to just take a look at the people in your life that you've been angry with that maybe hurt you and um, as we're coming up into Yom Kippur maybe maybe it's been seven years maybe it's time for you to lay that down maybe it's time for you to forgive maybe they're a different person now um, maybe you pick up the phone and try and see if uh, they've changed Maybe the relationship can start over. Maybe it's your mom or your dad or your daughter or somebody. Maybe. I don't know. But maybe seven years is enough. Or six years and the start of the seventh. I don't know how it works. Maybe it's only been one year, but the Lord says that's enough and you ought to be forgiving. I just think that uh, that we are subject to the spirit of the law uh, and the spirit of the law is to not hold something against somebody forever but to be redemptive to be forgiving to show grace as he does for you and to just pound and pound and pound which the internet does so well to pound and pound and pound away just endlessly is that's not the heart of Christ that's not the heart of Christ anyway thanks for listening God bless you all I pray the Lord to soften all of our hearts and uh, help us to look more like Jesus all the time amen